Hello everyone and welcome to this prelude to the tachyarrhythmia as today we are discussing the classification of tachyarrhythmia as an introduction to discussing each type of tachyarrhythmia in a separate lecture in detail. So today is an introduction to this topic. First of all, I want to dedicate this lecture to my professor Usam Diab who passed away two years ago by whom I got many of my knowledge in electrophysiology and if it wasn't for him this ECG course would not come to you in this way because most of the animation and the designs that you are going to see here were designed by him so I dedicate this lecture of course to him our ILOs today is to learn the scheme for classification of tachyarrhythmia and to learn their different mechanisms and it is important to note as we mentioned in the pradyarrhythmia that we are not talking here about acute or long-term treatment of tachyarrhythmia because we are dealing in the ECG course with the ECG diagnosis so we have three basic mechanisms for tachyarrhythmia, which are re-entry, triggered activity, and automaticity. And the triggered activity has two subtypes, which are early after depolarization and delayed after depolarization. Let's start with re-entry. From its name, re-entry is like a circuit is formed around an obstacle, throws the circuit and impulse rotates in like a circular fashion around a fibrous obstacle, which is usually a scar, or sometimes it is a normal obstacle that is present normally anat or anatomically in the heart. We need two prerequisites for re-entry. We need a substrate, which include two pathways with difference in the conduction velocity and difference in the refractory period, and a trigger, which is usually a premature repeat. So, for example, we have two pathways, like here, and we have a premature repeat that is blocked in one of these pathways. Why it is blocked here? The problem is that this pathway has longer refractory period, so it is blocked and greatly, while the other pathway has shorter refractory period, and so the impulse pass anti greatly slope with pathway slowly, and when it reaches the tail of the first pathway, the first pathway has recovered from refractoriness, and it has faster conduction velocity, and so the impulse pass retrogradely in the first pathway to form a complete re-entering circuit. So we have two different pathways. These two pathways have difference in the refractory period and in conduction velocity. The impulse gets plugged in one of these two pathways, and so it passes in the other one. And then when it reaches the tail of the first pathway, it will pass retrogradely. So, of course, we have many examples of re-entrant tachyarrhythmia, like AVNRT, which is called AV nodal re-entrant tachycardia, which is a very common type of supraventricular tachycardia. AV re-entrant tachycardia, of course, this tachycardia is correlated with the accessory pathway, which is part of the Wolf Parkinson White syndrome. So it is AVRT, which can present in a narrow complex form, which is considered a type of SVT, or in a wide complex form. And of course, we are going to discuss this in the SVT lecture. We have the atrial flutter, which is a macro re-entrant circuit. Most of the cases is typical flutter inside the right atrium, but maybe sometimes in left atrium in atypical cases. We have scar-related ventricular tachycardia, which occurs in patients with structural heart disease like ischemic LV dysfunction, like dilated cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, in which there is scars inside the ventricular wall, and this scar acts like a fibrous obstacle around which there are two circuits or two pathways with different conduction velocity and difference in refractoriness, and so when a premature peak comes, it can initiate VT, and this is considered the most common type of VT. And we have fascicular VT, which is a subtype of ventricular tachycardia occurring in a structurally normal heart. Now we are going to discuss the automaticity. We have two forms of automaticity, enhanced automaticity and abnormal automaticity. I think we can predict what's meant by each one from the name. Enhanced automaticity, the focus is normally an automatic focus, but it just shows enhanced or accelerated activity. And of course, the focus that shows normal automaticity is the SA node. So here the SA node is normally automatic, but it shows accelerated or enhanced activity, and so we call this enhanced automaticity. While in abnormal automaticity, this focus is not considered a normal automatic focus, like an atrial focus, AV nodal focus, or ventricular focus. And so, when it shows that automatic activity, we call this abnormal automaticity, because these foci don't normally show automaticity. So there's a difference between enhanced automaticity, which usually appears in the SA nodes, or abnormal automaticity, which can occur in an atrial focus, AV nodal focus, or ventricular focus. Of course, one of the very common examples of automaticity is the inappropriate sinus tachycardia, which is an example of enhanced automaticity, because here the SA node is normally automatic, but it shows an enhanced activity, leading to tachycardia at rest without any explanation or without any secondary causes. 
We have, of course, the focal atrial tachycardia, which is the most common type of atrial tachycardia and is caused by abnormal automaticity in the atrium itself. And we have junction tachycardia, which is caused by abnormal automaticity in the uh, AV node, leading to some type of junction tachycardia, which is not very common to see. Now we are dealing with the triggered activity. We have here something called the action potential of the ventricular muscle or the atrial muscle fibers, which shows phase zero, which is representing the depolarization, and we have like four phases representing the repolarization, and we are going to discuss this in a separate lecture. The problem here occurs with some types of after depolarization, which like a potential that occurs inside the action potential usually at the end of the repolarization so it occurred in this way here we can find that there was an after potential or after depolarization which occurred and this leads to prolongation of the repolarization which is mostly reflected as prolongation of the qt interval so we can call this example early after depolarization and we have many examples for this like, for example, in case of market access to pathway prolongation with some antiarrhythmic medication, in case of pradycardia, in case of hypokalemia, hypocalcemia, hypomagnesemia, which of course lead to long QT interval, and sometimes long QT interval can be congenital or can be caused by medication. So, one of the famous examples of triggered activity caused by early after depolarization are long QT syndrome, either congenital or acquired, and the Brady dependent VT. Then we have the other subtype of triggered activity, which is delayed after depolarization. And here, the after depolarization or the after potential occurs after nearly full repolarization. And mostly it is caused by calcium overload intracellularly. So this leads to a delayed after depolarization, which is usually reflected in the ECG like a wave after the T wave. And this is called delayed after depolarization. Of course, as it is caused by intracellular calcium overload, so the famous example for this is dejoxin toxicity. As we know, dejoxin toxicity is one of the causes of increased intracellular calcium, and this can explain many of the tachyarrhythmia that you see in dejoxin toxicity. Idiopathic PVCs and VT represent delayed after depolarization, and that's why idiopathic PVCs respond mostly to calcium channel blockers for treatments. Ischemic and reperfusion injury represent like delayed after depolarization, and so the why the VT that may occur in case of acute MI or after reperfusion of MI represent increased intracellular level caused by abnormal handling of calcium by the sarcoplasmic reticulum or by the receptors on the cell surface leading to ischemic VT which can occur in the acute MI so it is different from scar related VT which occurs in patients with long-standing structural heart disease and one of the channelopathies which is very famous the catecholaminergic polymorphic VT which we are going to discuss in a separate lecture so this is delayed after depolarization which is the other subtype of triggered activity now if I told you what are the types of tachyarrhythmia or what are the clinical presentation of tachyarrhythmia we have different forms we have the sinus tachycardia we have the ventricular tachycardia we have the supraventricular tachycardia atrial flutter and atrial fibrillation these are the famous examples of tachyarrhythmia so we need an scheme in order to understand what are the types of tachyarrhythmia in an organized way in order to classify them and in order to deal with each ECG in a precise and organized way. In order that you see a patient with tachycardia, this means that the heart rate is above 100 beats per minute, we can divide them into non-complex tachycardia in which the complex duration is less than 120 milliseconds and we have wide complex tachycardia in which the complex is more than or equal 120 milliseconds. So now we can divide any tachycardia into narrow complex and wide complex. We have another subclassification as we can divide each one of them into regular or irregular based on the rhythm and the RR interval. So we have four subtypes for tachycardia. Regular narrow complex tachycardia, irregular narrow complex tachycardia, regular wide complex tachycardia, and irregular wide complex tachycardia. Examples for regular narrow complex tachycardia are many like SVT, like sinus tachycardia, and like itra flutter with fixed rate of induction, like flutter with 1 to 1, with 2 to 1, or 3 to 1. Examples for the irregular narrow complex also are very famous, like AF with rapid ventricular rate. Itra flutter or itra tachycardia can present with irregular rhythm due to something called variable rate of conduction, as we are going to see in different lectures. And one of the famous tachyarrhythmias that we see a lot in patients with COPD, multifocal itra tachycardia. These are examples of irregular narrow complex tachycardia.
if we are speaking about white complex tachycardia, in the regular form, we have ventricular tachycardia, which is in most of the cases, it is regular, but it is not a fact that it should be present in each ventricular tachycardia. We have SVTU's apparency, and we have antidromic AVRT. Of course, we are going to have a separate lecture for white complex tachycardia. And for the irregular form, we have the pre-excited atrial fibrillation, in which AF occurs on top of wolf parkinson white syndrome. We have AF with apparency, and we have polymorphic VT. So VT may sometimes present with irregular rates. Of course, remember to record the ECG during any episode of tachyarrhythmia before termination, provided that the patient is hemodynamically stable, because this ECG is very beneficial for us in the AP lab and also to have a documentation for the patient symptom, which can help to tailor the treatment according to the type of tachycardia in the ECG. And don't forget to record the ECG after termination because it may reveal the possible cause of the arrhythmia. In many of the cases, the resting ECG after termination of tachycardia may show manifest pre-excitation, may, no feature, may show features suggestive of presence of structural heart disease. So, record the ECG during tachycardia and after termination. So, at the end of this very short lecture, which was an introduction, we understand how to classify the tachyarrhythmias in general, as we saw in the final scheme, and we know the mechanisms of tachyarrhythmia, which are normal automaticity and of course the other type is the enhanced automaticity re-entry and triggered activity and our take-home message record the ecg whenever possible during any tachycardia episode and repeat it after the termination and of course we are going to have separate lectures for these topics in tachyarrhythmia which are svt af and atrial flutter and approach to wide complex tachycardia thank you very much for your listening